Hey friends, how are you? I still miss you guys. I can't wait to see you. Hopefully we'll be able to see each other soon. I hope everybody is um, doing well and staying safe and uh, has good health. Um, I have some bad news, guys. I didn't get any more pictures. I got one more week to get them in, okay? I'll put them up here on the screen if you put a, if you send them to me. Um, have your mom, have your moms and dads share and like this post. Um, so we can get it out there to everybody. Um, but remember, remember, remember to send me your pictures of something that God has created with your chalk that I sent you. And if you don't have the chalk anymore, say that you lost it or you left it out in the rain and it just went away, just color me some. I'm sure you got me. I'm sure you have color paper, paper and um coloring crayons at home I, so just do me something okay if you have a whiteboard you can do it on your whiteboard in your home okay just draw me something and send it to me by my phone number or by Facebook okay all right we're still talking about creation um, and that is in the book of what you're right, it's in the book of Genesis, and that's where we're going to be today, again. But um, before we do that, we're going <coughs> to, excuse me, um, creation is everything God made. And we'll get more into that as we go into our lesson. Let's go ahead and um, go over our memory verse real quick. Um... So, I want to be able to hear you, okay? Uh, last week, I didn't hear you guys very good. I want to be able to hear you this week. I want you to say it. And remember what I asked you to do, if you can have your moms and dads write this memory verse down and put it on your refrigerator or even write it on a whiteboard or something that's in your house um, and go over it every day, okay? Let's go. Colossians 1.16 for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. All things were created through him and for him. Colossians 1.16. Easy! <laughs> I am getting good at that, guys. But I'm sure you guys probably beat me. I know uh, Carter probably beats me all the time. And who else? Who else does that a lot? Um, I don't know. You guys all shout it out and uh, do ESV on me, but we'll see. We'll get there. Miss Franny is becoming a pro. All right, let's go over it one more time, okay? Well, we might go over it a few more times. We'll see. Um, Colossians 1.16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. All things were created through him and for him. Colossians 1.16. ESV. You guys probably beat me that time. Because you guys like to say Colossians 1.16. And then ESV. I don't think you say really Colossians 1.16. But oh well. We'll let you slide. Okay. Alright. I think we're going to take some words out. We'll see if we can remember them, okay? I might need some help. He took all four words out at one time. Oh my goodness. I bet I bet I can get some help here. All right, so let's do this. Colossians 1:16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. Did I say that right? And on earth. All things were created through him and for him. Colossians 1.16 ESV. I was trying to do it by memory, and I still can't do it. <laughs> I was trying to do it without looking at it, which is what I want you guys to do, but I still messed up. See, Miss Franny's not perfect. All right, let's try it one more time. Colossians 1.16 ESV. Oh, I said ESV first. Ugh. 
For by him all things, things were created in heaven and on earth, and all things were created through him and for him. Colossians 1.16. Easy. That's how you guys say it, huh? Okay, we're going to say it one more time, guys. And hopefully by next week we'll know this by memory, okay? Colossians 1.16. For by, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. All things were created through him and for him. Colossians 1.16. ESV. Good job, guys. I heard you loud and clear this week. All right. So at this time, Pastor Paul's going to join me. Um, and we're going to do our skit. I don't think we did a skit last week. And I don't know why, but we just didn't. Um, but we're going to do our skit this week. And then we'll go over our big idea. Okay? Well, hello there, Pastor Paul. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. All right. Boy, Let's... boy I tell you, Miss Franny. I sure am glad I ain't no cow. <laughs> what in tarnation are you talking about, Pastor Paul? You know, them doggies we are driving out there. I'm glad I ain't one of them. Well, okay. I'll, I'll bite. What are, you, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you nothing. I'm just saying, I am glad I ain't a cow. Okay. Could you imagine having seven stomachs? Oh, my goodness, no. Well, now that you mention it, I'm glad you ain't no cow. Sure would be a lot of cooking if, if, you, if you were. And not only that, but to re-chew my food all the time, Ooh. it's bad enough the first time. But bringing it back to chew again, ugh! Oh my, yuck. <laughs> hey, I take a little offense of that, that, their comment. I am a pretty good cook, even if I have to say so myself. What's wrong with chewing my food more than, more than once? That wasn't no slam on you, but just an honest statement. Fine. But speaking of bringing things up, what got, what's got you started on that thought? I, I don't know. I was riding my horse today and noticing the differences between my horse and the cattle beside it. Then I started to wonder about all the differences between the two. It is pretty amazing how different they really are. Both are completely useful just for different things. I, I know. Then I began thinking about how we were all created by the same person, but just how different we all are from each other. So that is where you go, that is where you got your idea. You were sure glad you weren't a cow? Sorta. I, I mean, it's true after watching the cows it did make me glad I wasn't a cow. But I think I'm more amazed by the fact that God was so creative in creating all the things that he did. But why is that so amazing? Simple. He not only created all things, but each one was created to represent its own kind. How amazing is that? So God created each individual animal and plant and thing, things after his own kind? What does that mean? Well, I did some research. Even the rocks have different qualities causing them to be different from each other. Hmm. But they're all still rocks. Just because one rock might be brown and another white, I don't think I'll ever mistake one for a cat. Hmm. So true. Wow. God took some time to create these different things different kinds of things. I bet I bet it took him a long time to do it. Like years. Well, actually, I did some research on that subject as well. Wait a second. How in the world can you research this stuff when you're you are driving doggies in the ranch? 
Internet, Miss Franny. Internet. So anyway, it only took God six days to create everything, including all the different types of animals and rocks. Wow, that's just plum amazing. God is so creative. Just think, if God wanted to, or if he ran out of time, he could have just made all of his cows. Boy, I'm sure glad I'm not a cow. <laughs> now I see where you're coming from. And I gotta say, I'm sure glad I ain't a cow too. You got it. <laughs> well, that was pretty interesting. I'm glad I'm not a cow. First of all, I don't want seven stomachs. And second of all, I don't think I can re -chew my food that many times. Oh, yuck. And I never really thought about that. The different kinds of rocks. Amazing. But, hey, it's all good. God made it all in six days. Wait, 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 wait. I got an idea. What? Along with the pictures that you're drawing for Miss Franny, why don't you take a picture of some rocks at your house and send those in, too? That would be great. I didn't even think of that. You're welcome. Man, I'm glad he's here. Good idea, Pastor Paul. Good idea. So next week, if you're if you're watching this, next week I want you next week's the only week we have. I want you to send me your pictures that um, you're gonna draw for me, um, which is what got something that God created. It could be anything, the moon, the stars, the sky, you. A dog, a cat, anything. And I'll put it on the screen. And if you can send me some pictures of rocks around your house. And we'll see some different kinds of rocks. Okay? Great idea. Man, that was brilliant. Today's big idea is God created everything around its kind. In other words, um... He made humans in his own image. He made plants. Uh, he made plants that would produce like fruit. Um, like we said a couple weeks ago. I think it was a couple weeks ago. An uh, orange tree cannot produce apples. So an, an orange tree produces oranges. An apple tree produces apples. Um... And um, we talked about different kinds of flowers that's out there. Some are big, some are small, some are red, some are blue, some are purple, some are white. They're all different, but it's all a flower, okay? And we're going to talk about some different kinds of things today in our Bible story, okay? Um, each plant and tree contains a seed, okay? And that seed is necessary for that it's necessary for producing more and more of that one same thing according to its kind, the same kind of thing. So an apple seed grows more apples. Um, it doesn't grow peanuts, right? If I plant an apple seed, it's not going to pop up as a producing peanuts. Well, at least I hope not. We got troubles if it is. Um, but that's, that's the way God made them. Um, plants randomly, um, random different fruits and random different vegetables. But God was in control, okay? So he, he's the one that had all this under control and he's the one that created it. Now, how did he create it? He spoke it and it happened. We can't speak and let it happen, um, but God can. So God created plants in a very specific way um, so they could produ produce more of the same thing. Um, so when we plant something, what does it require? Mm -hmm. I heard somebody say sunlight, water, right? But if I just go out and put a seed on the ground um, and not bury it or anything like that, just put a seed on the ground and it watered. I, it'll probably eventually bury itself in in the um, dirt. But we also we also like to bury the seeds. We put them in soil. We put them in 
um, in the dirt and we water them and we the sunlight it you know it feeds them that's what feeds them um, at my mom's house right now they are growing a blackberry bush and they have actually put that blackberry bush it's it was little when they did it but it's pretty it's getting pretty big now so we'll probably have to transplant it and put it somewhere else but they put it in this pot um, so the roots could like get stronger and um, the blackberry bush is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so before it gets too big for that pot, we wanted we want to put that blackberry bush in the ground somewhere so it can produce more blackberries. Because if we let the if we put the roots in the ground, the roots can go further and further out, and it can get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. When we had our little boy, David, we got a tree. It was a dogwood tree from one of my family members. They, they sent it to us. And when we first got that tree, we put that tree in a, in a big flower pot so we can let those roots get stronger. Do you know that tree now is in my, in my mom's front yard? And it is so pretty. It's so much bigger than what it was when we first rece received it. But it's the roots have just developed and gone out and every every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and we've even trimmed it um it's just a tree it doesn't produce any fruit or anything like that but it's a beautiful beautiful tree it does produce flowers it puts it gets it has little flowers on it. i think they're white i don't really know but anyways you have to have sunlight and you have to have water um, and dirt for it to grow the roots the roots grow downward for a reason. Roots don't grow up. They grow downward. They get in the soil. Like they, they get their, they grab onto that dirt and they just thrive. Um, so, um, we are going to be where again? You guys remember what book of the Bible we're in? Mm, I haven't heard it yet. Genesis, somebody said it. I heard it. Somebody said it. So we're going to be in Genesis 1, but we're going to be a little bit further down in the chapter this week. We're going to be on verses 20 through 25, okay? So if you have your Bibles, and if your mom and dad are there, your grandma and grandpa or whoever, if they can help you turn to there, I would appreciate it, Okay? It's the first book of the Bible. You just shouldn't be hard to find. And remember, when we're looking, we'll have a big one for chapter 1. And our little numbers are the verses. So you're going to have a big number 1 and a small number 20. Okay? I'll wait just a few seconds. And I'll let your mommies and daddies help you find that. And, we'll, and I'll read it, okay? We're going to read verses one, chapter 1, verses 20 through 25. Okay, you guys ready? All right. You can even use your, like, iPads or iPhones or whatever, okay? Whatever you want to use. Okay, Genesis 1, 20 through 25. And God said, let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the expanse, Band, expanse of heaven of the heavens so God created the great seas captured and everything created that moves in which the water swarms according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind and God saw that that it was good and God blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was even, e evenly, and and there was evenly, and there was, there was evening. I knew I was reading that wrong. There was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day, chapter twenty-four, verse twenty-four is where I'm at. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creepy things, and beasts of the earth according to their kind. And it was so. Verse 25. 
And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, and livestock according to their kind, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. You guys, when those verses, when I, when I say, um, um, what does it actually say here? Let me find it. One, one thing. Be fruitful and multiply. That means um, having babies, like have having um, having babies to go in and for their like birds to have more birds and um, your livestock to have more livestock and your sea creatures to have more sea creatures to fill the lands and fill the waters with these kind of things. I'm not just whales um they have these little tiny fish in there I, I think i don't really like fish um but um they're god's creation so i kind of have to like them but um i ain't touching them for sure but any um be fruitful and multiply create more okay um over oh of its kind, create more of its kind. God created everything to produce, to produce more of the same thing. Not different things of the same thing. Like I was saying, if we have a cow, cows aren't going to have um, horses or pigs. They're going to have cows. Okay? Um, dogs. They don't lay eggs and hatch chickens, do they? No. Dogs have dogs. Chicken has chickens, okay? You see, um, our God's not only made, not only made the plants to produce seeds and fruit that grow into more of the same thing, but he, he did this with fish. He did it with birds. He did it with an all kinds of animals. Your dogs, your cats, your... Um, lizards oh i don't know why anybody would want a lizard but some people might snakes even oh let me tell you snakes are not for me mice are not for me oh but god created them so um have i mentioned yet that god is amazing he is amazing um According to the Bible, the first living creature God made were the fish. And he, cre and cre he created them in living water. That's where they belong. Fish can't live out of water, right? They would die. They need water. Um, I mean, they made other things like dolphins, sharks, whales, stingrays um ooh, those things probably would hurt if you get stung by one of those i know i think there was somebody in our church that got stung by a sea ray no no it wasn't a stingray it was a jellyfish i think noah got stung by a jellyfish one time um i had those backwards i was thinking of stingray i don't stingrays would probably really harm you i mean jellyfish is good too but uh i don't know about sea um starfish have you ever seen those those are so cute and but Oh, if one of those moved in my, if I picked it up and one of them moved, I'd probably throw it because I'd be scared. Um, crabs. I love to eat crabs, but I don't want to touch them. They have to be cooked before Miss Franny will touch them. Um, when you think about all the different things, the living things in the area, in, in the sea, it's hard to focus on only one kind. Um, I know we were on a trip one time. I think we were actually going to the National or something. We really don't go on vacation, just except for the Nationals. <laughs> so um, I think we were, I don't know where we were going, but we saw dolphins. And they were so pretty to watch. I mean, they are a gorgeous creature. Now, I wouldn't want to touch them, but they are really pretty to watch. And if you think of that and you think what else is out there, um, Things that can harm us, like a shark or whatever. But there are just so, so many things under the seas that we don't even think about. Some from this tiny little fish to the big, big sea creatures. Um, on the fifth day of creation, 
Um, God wasn't done yet, okay? After the waters, after the waters creatures were created, God created the different kinds of birds. Now, there are some pretty birds out there. There are some fat birds. There are some skinny birds. Um, Pastor Paul don't like birds. Neither do I, but um, we got some stories about Pastor Paul. But um, some are so pretty. Like I've seen some blue birds, some red birds. The other day I was setting out on my mom's porch and there was this bird and it was so short and fat. He was stubby. I mean, he barely would, he barely fit through the fence hole. I was, I was laughing at him, but of course he didn't, he don't have feelings, so he didn't know I was laughing at him, but I got a big kick out of him. Um, so he, God created the birds that fly in the air. Um... I would have been, it would have been amazing to me. Uh, I would have loved to be, been there to see that happen when the birds just kind of flew away. So pretty. So pretty. Um, that you could just see, like sometimes when you're looking up um, in the sky and you see the birds, sometimes they're so high they just look like little dots in the air. Um, to me, that's, that's so pretty just to see them fly away and I just don't want them to bomb my car or anything, but, um, but they're pretty, all different colors, black, blue, red, orange. I've seen some with like an orange belly, um, all kinds of them. I don't know them, but that would be totally cool to witness when, if God, when God created them, they just kind of speckled the sky with different kinds of um, birds. Um, the next day, on the sixth day, the final day before God um, would take a rest, um, he created all other living things, um, like different creature, creatures on land. And what else did he do on the sixth day? Anybody? Taylor probably knows this answer. Taylor? I need some help. What did he do on the sixth day? Who was created on the sixth day? I knew you would know it, Taylor. So, yes, we were created. Humans were created on the sixth day. Okay? But we were created in his image. Means, remember last week, why were we created? It's not like we look like Jesus. It's not like we act like Jesus. He wants us to be like him, but um, we're humans. What is it? Right. It's because we have a soul, a living soul. Um, now we're going to learn a little bit more about animals. Um, I'm going to show a creature right here. Um, okay, here's a clue. Uh, it's close relate, close, closely related to a crocodile and a dinosaur. Anybody guess what that thing? That thing looks creepy to me. And I'm kind of nervous even being like beside the picture. It's just, <laughs> they just look creepy. It's a tough one though. I'm talking about, this is the... Uh, Komodo. Komodo dragon. That's right. See, I forgot the name of it already. It just, it worries me. Look at those big claws. I mean, that thing probably bites your leg off. I'm telling you, if I saw one of those things, I'd, I don't run very much, but Miss Franny would run. You guys would be like, see you, Miss Franny. I'm just scared of him. I can't take him. I would freak out. Have you ever heard of that animal? I'm sure my boys probably have heard of it. The girls are probably thinking, no way, I don't want that thing in my house. Or, I don't want to study on that thing. We're together, ladies. We're together. But the boys probably like it. Look at his skin. It's all scaly. and ugh. But you know what? That's God's creation. And I'm going to tell you, you probably have to love it, but... uh I don't know if I can. Miss Franny has troubles. Really, I do. Um, 
Well, they live in trees and they eat mostly insects and birds. Now, I don't like birds either, but can you see that thing eating a bird? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I don't know if I can handle that. I don't. I mean, you could probably see the bird go down his throat and, and oh, no. But he and he also gives that he gives them protection from the aggressive males that um, that all live on the ground since they are so heavy. Um, I don't know. This guy looks like he's on the ground to me. We're gonna say he's a male. Guess what? These things grow to be 10 feet long and about 275 pounds. Holy smokes! That's gigantic. Oh, no. No, no, no. I don't want something this big, okay? I can't handle that. That is like an alligator. Alligators are probably 10 to 8 to 10 feet tall, right? Wouldn't you think? I don't know. I don't think I can have him as a pet. They probably don't. I don't know. Do they have Komona dragons as pets? I don't know. Well, he is huge. He's muscular. His tail is so strong. Um, his tail is so strong. and uh, He is the world's largest lizard. Well, that ain't no lizard to me. I mean, good gravy. That thing is... Uh, Lizards, mm -hmm. you see people walking around sometimes with lizards on their shoulder or whatever. Now that's a lizard. This thing, it's a monster. I don't know. Um, the adult um, Komona dragon is mostly green, gray, black with white and yellow patches. Uh, the special color coloring God provided helps the kimono dragon be camouflaged in his environment. Yeah. He's hiding. He's going to attack when he can attack. So he and he's probably camouflage also means that he's he kind of blends in with the ground or the trees or you know the greenery around them just to protect them as well. But he probably attacks some of his um food like he catches it and um, he kind of hides probably, and I don't know, but I hope I never see one in real life. This is giving me the creeps enough. Um, the area that the kimono dragon lives in is a very dangerous, um, for babies. Uh, to protect them, the mother buries her eggs in the dirt. Turtles kind of do that too, I think. I think they bury them in the sand. And then um, they all hatch and go into the water. Um, to protect them, the mothers bury them in, bury their eggs in the in the in the dirt. Once they hatch, they must dig their way out to the surface and to survive. So this, well, this we've determined this is the uh, male. We're going to say he's the male. Um, the the mamas have to bury their eggs in the dirt and then the babies they're on their own once they're once they're buried they gotta dig their way out of the dirt i imagine the dirt's not probably it's probably not too deep but they're on their own they're like mama's like see ya they gotta they gotta dig their way out so that's what they do that's what how god made them okay um the kimono dragon is an amazing example of god's creativity um, I don't know. God made him to do a purpose. And God made us to do a purpose. But I'm glad I'm not in the same place this dude's in because I'm scared. The Komodo dragon is a relative of the dinosaur that once roamed the earth. Um... They are called, sometimes they're called living fossils. Interesting. They're called living fossils. Since they haven't really changed at all since they've been created, they're pretty much the same all the time. Scientists have compared the skeletons of the kimono dragons 
and dinosaurs to find very, they, they're very similar. Very similar. Um, so uh, that's why they're in the same family. They're not a dinosaur and they're not an um, alligator, but they're very similar. Okay? God teaches that they were created on the same day as man. That's interesting. Dinosaurs are their cousins, and the com dinosaurs are their cousins. The Komodo dragons were were created in the Garden of Eden at creation. That's amazing. Um, and he God created all of that in six days. In six days. All right. So let's. Uh, let me pray with you, and um, I'll see you next week. Um, um, we'll talk again next week. And remember, remember, pictures, pictures, pictures. You can be put on this screen. And if you want, if your parents want, you can even send me your pretty face next to your picture. If your parents want you to be on TV. If not, just send me your picture and we'll put your name on there. And also, what Pastor Paul say? Rocks. If you can show, give me some different pictures of rocks out there, we'll put them up there too. And we'll say, well, these are at um, Hunter's house. And these are at um, the Hilbert's house. And these are at um, the Bernard's house. Different things. I'm sure you can find a rock somewhere. Some of you have big rocks in your yard. Some of you have little tiny rocks. Send me something, okay? All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for each one of these students. I want to thank you for each one of these parents. And I want to encourage them, Lord, to understand your word and understand it that it's a truth. And I want to challenge them to fully believe in your word, in your, in your word, in your Bible. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'll see you next week. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you next week. Bye.